Please be advised that in order to foster quality discussions in each episode, we will spoil the stories in each game and text we talk about. Good news is, 90% of the titles we cover are old enough that many of you might already know all about them. That said, we do encourage you to play and read before listening. I started thinking about nostalgia, and I noticed that I typically love to feed off of older generations' nostalgia. Do you know what I mean? So you are feeling nostalgia for a time that you weren't alive? Yes. Interesting. And in a way, we've talked about this before. Uh, I think in the way that we kind of talked about it when we discussed in, the, in a hollow, one of the Halloween episodes, I think, about how we hold on to uh, reading and, and stuff and older video games and, uh, you know, how, like, p- younger people t- are still, fortunately, trying to play old games nowadays and stuff like that. But I was thinking, because, like, there's these classic Mega Man games, uh, and, like, old TV shows, like, I was just listening to another podcast where the guys are actually, like, in their 40s and they're talking about, um, did you ever see that Super Mario Brothers Super Show? Mm, I vaguely remember it. Stuff like that. And then, like, the the Legend of Zelda cartoon. (laughs) Yeah. Like, stuff like that. When when I hear people talk about it, it sounds so good. And then I I enjoy, like, exploring and watching that stuff because... They like it so much, and it's it's better to me than my own like my own quote unquote nostalgia, I guess. Like, like when I think of the stuff that I grew up with, it just doesn't seem as good as <laughs> like my experience doesn't feel as good as other like the way other people, older generations, talk about their experiences. You know what I mean? Well, that's like when I watched a few episodes of the Angry Video Game Nerd when he does the uh, you know Remember When or whatever the segment is. And he did a Contra episode, I think, over the last year or two. It was really good. And it was just about him growing up playing Contra and just, like, these fun games. And just his nostalgia for his childhood. I was close to that era, but it was before mine. So I do get that feeling because, Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately for me, I did not grow up in a house that had computers and cell phones and all this stuff. You know, we were late adopters to that because we didn't have the money. But... That allowed me to appreciate uh, actually just hanging out, playing games, being with your friends. But I feel like, uh, especially the generation that came right after me, uh, even if you were born in the 90s, you probably were introduced to those things earlier or you had them in your life at an earlier age. So you weren't able to just be like, oh, yeah, I remember playing games with my friends. And that's all we did. Nobody was on their phone. Nobody, you know. Uh, had to take breaks to go do stupid shit on social media. Like, none of that was around. So it was just like you were always in the moment. And I always appreciated that. But it seemed like even before my time, like the 80s, when the kids were growing up in the 80s, like, that was, like, really in the moment. Like, you watch Stranger Things, you get that feeling even, which I think is why that show's so popular. Yeah, and I definitely had some of those moments. I I, I was just hanging out with my friends uh, last night, and we've been talking about all those moments. Um, so like it's there. I just feel like, for some reason, it, like you said, like the 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 further you go back, the stronger it seems. Like the stronger that nostalgia seems. And I don't know really. I don't really know what that is, but it, it, except like, <laughs> and I almost want to say like, it seems like as time goes on, we get this sensation of like quality degrading. We have good moments, but. And we experience the, this the entertainment and media and, you know, video games, TV shows, stuff like that. Then when we, like, the stuff that we're watching, we're like, it's just a little bit less good than what they had mm-hmm. back then, you know? <laughs> I I was writing it, writing down about it, like, to brainstorm, and I was just thinking, like, it makes certain things that are sort of outside of our lifetimes, you know, objects, you know, like toys, video games, TV shows all kinds of media like that it's like a it's it feels like dreamy and unattainable in such a way 
that you nevertheless want to get your hands on it somehow, even though you can't quite do that in the way that the original generations who experienced those things did, you know? I don't know if it's a feeling that you kind of get, no matter what generation you're in, or if it's my generation more, or if that's just... I mean, because when you think about it, there are museums and antique collectors, and uh, this is why like shows like American Pickers exist. There's something about trying to grab onto those things that were just, you know, the history. If you want to let me get totally out there, since I feel spacey today... <laughs> Uh, well, if I could bring you back down for a minute. Yeah. Um, the rose tinted glasses thing is definitely real. And we actually experienced that not too long ago together. If you remember when you brought your typewriter that you got, I think over Christmas or your birthday or something mm -hmm. over to my house. And I just received the typewriter. My wife got me and we decided, Hey, let's uh, try typing up a story or something, you know? Yeah. And, um, it was uh it was difficult and it wasn't really that fun of an experience and i actually learned going back to not having a computer or anything growing up i actually learned how to write on an old typewriter and i had this remembrance of it being such an awesome thing like oh i loved it it was so good it fucking sucks it's, not fun. <laughs> it's really hard to write on those like you have to punch the keys yeah and so we get these memories that we hold so fondly, but they're not always like that. Like you think going to Blockbuster, everybody has nostalgia for Blockbuster now. Like, oh, it was so great going there. And you could browse the movie selection or the video game section and you pick what you want. And okay, but then there was also late fees. There was the fact that they're always out of what you wanted. There was the time you get a fucking, you go home and you realize either the disc wasn't in there or the VHS wasn't in there. Or, I mean, it was in there, but it was like uh, a bootleg or somebody switched out. Oh, yeah. Or you get, uh, you have to rewind it if it was the VHS. Like, there's always these things where, no, it actually wasn't that good. They were, there was overpriced for the time. Like, you had to buy the snacks and stuff. But we only take away, you know, even goes back to going to the movies when you were a kid. It seems so much cooler than it is now going to the movies. And it's not that it changed that much. It's just that when you were younger, it was like this big event. Even going to a blockbuster was a big event. Like, oh, man, this is something we're doing. You'd, if we had to do that now as adults, it probably wouldn't be that fun. Like, uh, even going to the movies, I don't think of it as an event mm -hmm. anymore. I'm just like, I want to see the movie. I'd rather watch it at home, but you yeah. know, it's only in theaters. It's not. It's just not that interesting compared to the memories you have of it. So right. I think the nostalgia thing does um, get tainted a little bit if you actually look at it from a realistic uh, perspective. <laughs> yeah, and I actually, I was thinking also about how you always tell me uh, I, I'm looking through rose tinted glasses <laughs> about like, like being, trying to be a purist about playing original, you know, old, old video games and not using save states, not looking Dying shit up. a million times. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I still feel that way. Like I, I still want to experience it as close to the original as possible. However, I am letting myself use save states after I like, I like, I like to experience it to a degree. So like, I like to play a level, figure out you know, die and die and die, figure out how to get to the end of that level the re the, the, the true way without using safe states. And uh, and then it's like, all right, I figured out how to do it. Now I just want to, I don't want to waste my fucking time anymore. Like, I want to yeah. get, I want to get on with this. Like, I, I want to experience the game. I want, I want to feel what that feels like to figure it out myself, to get all the way to the end of a level, of each level. But when I get to the end of that level, I don't want to keep fucking dying and waste just wasting hours and hours and hours of time playing it so true to the to how it was originally made, uh, just for the sake of being pure about it. Because uh, ultimately, we're in 2023, almost 2024. Well, actually, we'll be 2020. No, I don't know what this is coming out, but anyway, we're 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 in the in our current time where there are like a, like thousands of video games out there. I want to play more. I don't want to spend, you know, it's it's not 1988 or whatever yeah. where, where there's like 100 good games out. There's like thousands. I want to be able to get through uh, uh, more games and books and not just waste a shit ton of time. So in that way, that 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 is that is a more realistic look at it. But also, I always think about like 
the toys and stuff. Like when I when I go to like Comic Cons and uh, the video game convention, there's so much cool shit out there, and I like I see Mega Man figures and like original action figures from old movies like Alien and you know like I don't know, like He Man shit and you know all that kind of stuff, and it's so appealing to me. And it's like there's no fucking reason for me to buy that stuff. It's not even part of my experience. I just <laughs> There's that draw because it's somebody's nostalgia. It's like that's valuable to somebody, and I'm interested in in understanding and feeling like just skimming off that satisfaction and happiness that uh, that people from those actual generations felt. I think the nostalgia for action figures and toys actually holds up very well, though, unlike some of the other things we discussed, uh, such as like blockbusters and things like that. Because, like, for me, I have a very strong fondness for old action figures and toys and Lego sets and things. Not um, because I want to collect them now, but because I actually played with them. Like, when I was yeah. a kid, uh, it was, like, hours and hours of, like, I remember with G.I. Joe's. Like, I was creating storylines. I didn't even know I was writing at the time because I wasn't putting <laughs> it to paper. But I was creating stories for all the G.I. Joe's, and I was actually doing missions and it was crazy, like the things I was able to come up with and for just for hours entertain myself. And I broke the shit out of all my toys because <laughs> I played with them so hard. So there was no collecting for me then. It was just uh, because I look now, like when I go to those things, I'm like, oh, I had all this super expensive stuff. I destroyed them. But I, I'd, I'd rather have destroyed them than kept them in the box for yeah. monetary reasons because right. I actually had fun with them. But that's one thing that really held up for me is you can't take that away. Like there is no rose tinted glasses for the nostalgia I have for uh, toys because I actually was in the moment enjoying those as fully as I could. And I feel like a lot of kids don't have that now. I know kids get so many toys for Christmas and stuff now uh, because it's like considered mandatory. There is no special present. Oh, this is a once in a lifetime present. No, now it's just like every year they get so many toys and mm-hmm. they just junk them. They barely play with them because unless it has a screen, they don't really give a shit. And I think uh, this is a digression, but I do worry that the generations coming up are not going to have the same imaginations that we did just because they're not using their brains in the same way anymore. Mm -hmm. Like maybe they'll be, you know, obviously they're more computer literate. So anything with tech stuff they're good with, but that's like just being able to create scenarios and stories in their head. I don't know if they'll be able to do that in the future because they're not playing with toys or doing things that use that creative side of their brain. Right, at least, and there's only like a, there's probably a, only a margin of parents who force some of that creative time, that imaginary time, or imagination time, whatever. Um, yeah, I don't, I mean, I'm again, this is generalities. I'm sure there are people out there who are like, no, you're going to play with your Barbies yeah, No, or but the whatever. truth is that even, even, even the kids that are being uh, made to have that experience of like, just sit there and play, like, enjoy yourself, use your mind. Even those ones, still, the majority of their time is spent just watching fucking TV, being on, like, screwing around on their iPads and stuff. And do you think when they're with their friends, they're playing with toys? No, no. they're playing on screens. Yeah. Like the, it just, what are the odds that a whole group of parents are going to make their kids just play with toys with no screens yeah. in sight? Not going to, and yeah, I mean, it happens, it, I'm sure but... it happens, but it's not as uh, yeah. much as we would like. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, welcome. The Arcade Bookshop, where we talk about video games, video games, and their literary video counterparts. <laughs> for all of you who love to play and to read. Thanks so much for listening and joining us today. I'm Bryce Yoli, and as always, I'm here with my pal and cousin-in-law, Caleb James. This month, we, we went... like to play video games and look at dead trees. <laughs> this month... We went book first since we had our special arcade bookshop drunken pen writing podcast crossover last episode. Uh, today we're talking about Mega Man 10, and we're talking about Mega Man 10 because in our crossover episode we had a great and heavy conversation about the plague by Albert Camus, and we wanted to play a game that was related but a little more fun and lighthearted. I just played this for the first time. When did you last play it? Uh, years and years ago. Yeah. I don't remember. Before I moved here, for sure. Yeah. And as Mega Man games go, it's pretty, uh, they're pretty straightforward with their small story elements. Um, but regardless, it's pretty crazy because, like, every single one of them is 
as far as I mean, as far as I know, they're all fun. Like even the bad ones. Yeah, they're very entertaining games if you like shooting stuff. Yeah, and I haven't. I've only played a few of them, but it. Just, I mean, they're all kind of this. They're all kind of the same thing, but I hear they're like all worth playing at the same time. It's really, it's a really unique situation, in my opinion. Except for Mega Man Soccer, that was fucking the shits. That was the drizzling shits. That was awful. Yeah, I've heard a little bit about that. Not good. So let's talk about. Uh, let's 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 run down the synopsis of this lovely video game and its convoluted story points. There is a robot plague. A disease begins infecting and disabling all the robots in the world, which is impacting the daily life for humans. Coffee makers aren't coffee making. Vacuums aren't vacuuming. Toasters aren't toasting. Because they've come down with a deathly illness known as Roboenza, a disease which causes the robots to malfunction and attempt to take over the world. Dr. Wiley claims that a machine he devised capable of curing the disease is stolen by an infected robot. Mega Man and Proto Man must defeat all the robot bosses in order to get this machine back and obtain the cure to Roboenza and save the world. Yeah. Fascinating story. Fascinating. Very, very, uh, that Dr. Wiley, he's a real Wiley cat, you know? <laughs> creating diseases and creating the cure for the diseases. I think he's, he could be a substitute for Big Pharma, honestly, if I'm, you know, I want to dig into it. I, you can a little bit later if you want to. And then he created the COVID vaccine so <laughs> he can cure the people of COVID. But guess what? He created COVID in a lot. I'm sorry. That I goes mean, with our plague episode, I think. Yeah. We talked about the More pandemic less, yeah. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't go into conspiracy theories, I don't believe. <laughs> Dr. Wiley didn't create COVID as far as I know. Right. I'm like not, I'm not super familiar uh, with the Mega Man games. So I've played, I think I played like maybe one I, at least one and two, maybe three, and then I played this one, and we jumped to Mega Man Ten just because we talked about the plague, and it sounded like this one was about an epidemic, a, you know, a, a disease, and uh, those two things go together. Epidemic and disease. <laughs> well, yeah, they go, they no, I mean like I mean well. like the plague, and the plague is about <laughs> epidemic and disease, and and Mega Man Ten is about. Same shit. Anyway. I think you're being redundant, but I got you. Yeah, I, I mean, I probably am because, you know, this is very simple. But anyway, I was just going to say, I don't really know how, like, the characters usually play out. Uh, is it always a thing that Dr. Wily seems okay at first and then he turns into an asshole? Well, other than the PlayStation Mega Man game, the 3D RPG one, I don't really remember any of the stories of Mega Man other than Dr. Wily turns into an asshole and you shoot a bunch of guys with stupid names and you take their powers and you shoot more stuff and then you beat up Dr. Wily. That's about it. And I know there's a Dr. Yeah. Light, you know, because yeah, you always he's always have a guy one. named Light. Yeah. yeah, he's the good one. Yeah. Well, let's run down the gameplay because the majority of this game is really just about the gameplay. And even then, it's not that complicated. But... Basically, you can play as Mega Man and Proto Man, and I think after your first playthrough, uh, you can play as Base. Do you are you familiar with Base? Is that a sister? No, that's. Uh, I thought that was like Mega Man's sister. Is oh well, maybe? I mean, I I, honestly, know. I don't know. I, <laughs> maybe it's his girlfriend. Because there's also that that uh, that girl called Roll. That's who I'm thinking of. Roll. Yeah, that's the sister. Yeah, you can't play as her, but she's in it. Um, she gets sick. And then yeah. she, the touching moment where she has to give the cure to Mega Man because he also gets the disease. Uh, we're skipping ahead. I don't think it matters. But yeah, who the fuck is Base then? I, he, he well, he's like a. I think he has a black suit. I don't is he know. Like Mega Man's version of Knuckles. It may be. I well, I don't know. Cool, because that's like that would be Proto Man, wouldn't it? Is he like Mega Man's version of Tails then? Or maybe Proto Man would be like Tails. I don't know, but. Who's cooler looking? That's that that determines who's knuckles. Well, Proto Man is red, so that makes me feel like he's knuckles, but I don't know. I don't know. Base looks pretty cool. Yeah, they both. I mean, they're both cool looking. I only played as Mega Man. I uh, I I played as both of them when I played the game. Mm. I'm trying to read who this guy is about. He got the Base Buster. What if this whole time we're wrong and he's actually Bass? <laughs> he's just he's just a fish theme guy, but we're just not getting it. That's why he has those big fin looking things on his head. And then every time you shoot something, he's like glub glub, blub blub blub. Maybe anyway. he's real good at water levels. <laughs> this is a great episode. 
Oh, they the people want this content right here. <laughs> he is the anti-hero, Bryce. Okay, base. tell me more. Anti-hero. Let's get bogged down to base real hard because that's right. what people want to hear Let's about. Fucking do it. He warps away when you defeat him. Oh no, is that a thing that he does? When you defeat when you him, kill him. He who hesitates is lost. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just reading random shit that makes no sense to me at all. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I don't fucking remember all base right. at all, honestly. I didn't fucking. I, I, I beat that game a long time ago, and uh, it, it didn't leave much of an impact because none of the Mega Man games did. They're re- they're they're like drinking heavily. It might be a lot of fun while you're doing it, but then after you're just kind of hazy and hungover. You and forgot you really what don't happened. Remember? Yeah, you, yeah you don't it's gone. Any of- it. I mean, I'll I'll always remember this. <laughs> Actually, to, to completely contradict the last sentence that I just spoke, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll I'll always remember that this game. I mean, mainly because I played it for the podcast, and I I take notes and I try to like, <laughs> you know, actually remember what I did. Uh, well, see, you're the opposite of me because I went on a Mega Man binge a couple yeah. of years ago, and I think that's uh, probably why I don't remember most of these games, because you just play them back to back to back. You're, it feels like you're playing the same fucking story over and over. You're like, what is I couldn't happening? fucking do it, dude. It's hard. All right, I'm going to get to this. We're going to talk more about this, but let's just run down the gameplay. So, like every other Mega Man game, you have to beat eight different stages to defeat eight different robot bosses in any order you like. And what's cool is that even though this just came out in, like, 2010, um... As if that that was just yesterday. That was like thirteen fucking years ago. I'm an idiot today. Um, the, <laughs> this, but the game is uh, this game and Mega Man Nine before it were brand new, but retro style Mega Man games, like the first few, like uh, one through four or whatever. But very simply, it's a Mega Man game. You jump, shoot, you use your Robo Dog Rush, and uh, you know to like uh, jump high up, and you know he has those like he has like that skate move. He like jet it's a good move. move. Yeah, he like cool move. he like scrolls across the screen to get you into places you can't reach, and then you also get all the weapons after each uh, robot boss you beat uh, to help you eliminate the regular enemies and to strate- strategize against the the successive robot bosses that you go for. I have to say though, as simple as all Mega Man games are, probably because I'm uh, not the most familiar with them. Um, I was completely not expecting the extra shit ton of hours of gameplay after you beat the first eight. Uh, after you beat the, the yeah the the eight robot bosses the first time. Um, remember I remember I was texting you and I was like, I'm gonna beat this in a in a day or two, and then a fucking like week went by and I'm like I'm still fucking working on it. I, yeah, <laughs> those wily stages are so ridiculously hard, relentless. Do you remember having trouble? I mean, it seems like you just, like, ease through these games like it's nothing. I don't know. You see me with the Super Birthday Mario. I can fly through very difficult things. I don't fucking once I get it. I the patterns. But, yeah, these Mega Man's games are hard, it's, especially uh, when they get to, like, the later stages of the games. All of a sudden, it's like it goes from easier mild to just, like, fucking hard. It doesn't yeah. have a medium. Like, okay, it's getting a little advanced. No, just, like, hard. And it's not even complicated. It It's just... It's just hard. Like, you see exactly what you have to do, and you just can't get it done. And I actually bought this game. I bought the, like, the, like, the Mega Man Legends 2 collection or whatever whatever it's called. Um, so it has, like, 7, 8, 9, 10 in it. And there are no save states in there. <laughs> so I had to actually play it legit. So, like, lots and lots of dumbass deaths and start overs and dear God. Just, it took me so long. And I don't know about you, but I don't understand how you're supposed to logically figure out which boss you go for first, and then which ones are supposed to follow each. I know it's, like, up to you, but there is, like, a an ideal, there's always an ideal order. Trial and error. I always just think I muscled through the games and never did the proper order if anything i feel like i always did the hardest order and i had I the worst weapons for each boss that i was supposed to defeat <laughs> i i definitely i think i did look that up because i could not figure it out and it was it was one of those things where it's like i know i suck at video games and <laughs> i'm going to do this all the wrong ways and i kind of just want to know what the right <laughs> the preferred way is like I'll beat it fair and square. I just the the trial and error thing in these games is like 
very time consuming because it's it's hard enough figuring out how to get through the you know like there's like I think there's like three stages of each stage you know um mm-hmm. it's hard enough trying to figure that out and that's time consuming alone <laughs> and then to do that with trial and error like well let me get through this whole entire level and then find out it's the wrong one and then <laughs> and do it eight more times <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's a lot. At the same time, that's the charm of these games because they're like, like that's what all of them are, except uh, like you know, a small handful. They changed it up a little bit, but like most times, Mega Man is about being able to play the game in any order you want and and figuring out those best ways if you have the patience for that shit. But for me, it's incredibly frustrating. And by those wily stages, I was re- ready to fucking rage quit that shit. <laughs> yeah, I know that feeling all too well. It's it's funny because like another part, another uh, charm of Mega Man games that I think across the board everyone loves is the music, which it is fantastic, very, 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 very good. But when you're playing that over and over again, you start like making fun of it. You're like, <laughs> like you know, <laughs> like mocking the fucking <laughs> little eight bit tune. It's like, don't fucking, don't fucking sing at me like that. I just want to, I, I want to win this shit. I want it to be over with. God damn it. I don't want to play this anymore anymore. <laughs> I have only played, uh, moving out of gameplay, kind of, uh, other Mega Man games. I have only played these retro style ones. I've never played any of the other ones, like Mega Man X or anything like that, when the graphics started getting a little better. I, but, like, even as much as I, like, had it was agonizing getting through this thing overall it did make me want to play more and play the newer ones because i can just imagine that as they started advance advancing like i I mean obviously these are new but made in the original nintendo style or you know the Mm 8-bit style but i just imagine that you know as they started getting more advanced it got a lot more fun i would imagine they got a lot more fun i hear the Mega Man x ones are really cool i don't know did you play how many did you play I can't remember. I played a lot of the newer ones. Uh, shit, they're not new now. But when uh, I think my brother might have had them, and I played them. I, they ones there was a lot of them I didn't beat. I just like played levels, and I was like, okay, because for me, a lot of those games like they, they get not stale. But I was never a huge mm-hmm. side scroller, just shooting shit fan. Like I wasn't, believe it or not, a huge contra fan. Like it's fun for a playthrough with your friends, but yeah, when you are like constantly playing these games, they kind of get repetitive to me um i think and i could be wrong but i feel like mega man uh fell to the same problem a lot of uh franchises went through when the games started advancing and we got better graphics and stuff and the gameplay was smoother they nerfed the games a lot Mm. like i said i might be wrong about the mega man series but they just a lot of the newer games you play are like so easy and you're almost like you get a walk through and there's no trial and error. It's just like, oh, this is how you play it. And then you just kind of fly through it. And it, those aren't that fun to me. Something about that relentless yeah. death and you don't know what the fuck you're doing. And it's just really irritating. But then you just so much more reward. Like, you're, oh, I'm six years old and I'm playing Ninja Gaiden. Yeah, this is going to go well. <laughs> it's like you're never going to fucking beat the game until you're like 25 years old. But the uh, the Mega Man games, I'm pretty sure they got easier as the, the franchise went along. Um and maybe they do still have like the the either it gets relentlessly hard near the end or I think what a lot of games have gone through is easy mode, hard mode, you know, whatever, medium mode, uh, because they want all gamers to be feel like they feel inclusive. Like, I'm not good at video games, but I can yeah. play this because there's an easy mode. But then at the same time, it's like, what's the reward? I don't know. I actually like that system because there's a lot of games I played where even going to like Fear and Hunger where if I just played the hard mode, it's so fucking relentlessly hard that I don't, I just want to rage quit and I can't do anything. Uh, so I do appreciate the easy mode, but, um, I don't like when games don't have the option. It's just easy throughout. That's, that's boring too. Yeah. Um, in terms of reward, I was actually just talking about this idea to my, with my mom the other day, because I, I don't know if I mentioned this already in a previous episode, but the one game my mom the one like actual video game aside from like Andy Crush and like Farmville and shit mm. that that she actually played was Super Mario Brothers the in you know, the original game um I, I think she got it for my brother 
when he was a kid. But <laughs> she was like, he would go put him to bed and then I'd pretend I'm turning it off. And then I go right back out there and keep playing it. <laughs> <laughs> and she would play it until like two in the morning every day until she fucking beat the whole thing. So uh, it's it's crazy to think that my mom has beaten a whole entire video game like that 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 requires persistence and uh, being okay with starting shit over and over and over and over again. Because uh, mm-hmm. I have never seen her. You know, the only other thing I've seen her play is uh, Tetris. She always really liked Tetris, but but that's that's different. Also, it's like mindless. Yeah, I just my mom is not a video game person, so it's like bizarre to me to think that uh, she would do that. But yeah, we were talking about how rewarding it is even though it's like she was like i hated like having to start things over and over again like all the way from the beginning Mm -hmm. and i still fucking hate that so much but she said ultimately it feels so good when when you do do that over and over again and you keep learning about the game and what they've what how they've put it together and 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 why they put things in certain places and how exactly you have to do everything to keep continuing and i do really love that it's just and i've probably said this shit before it's but it but it is rewarding and it makes you feel like you figured stuff out and and i have said this certainly a thousand times you know growing up i was always i would get stuck i'd look i look it up i look up what to do I no just, good cheater. Yeah, I I'm fucking worthless. So I'm <laughs> trying to fix myself. <laughs> but in terms of Mega Man, I do think some of them got nerfed. And I'm I'm only speaking about this based on what I've heard other people say, but like who grew up with the games cuz I haven't played them myself, but overall, I think most of them are were regularly challenging. Well, you know what? They changed the challenging levels of them depending on the platform, too, because I got an emulator for my phone. It's like a free emulator, and it had credits on it. So I got the, uh, it was like a Mega Man pack. It had like the first three or four Mega Mans or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was playing them on there, and I just fucking, I mean, I thought, oh, it's going to be on my phone. It's going to be harder to play this game. I just destroyed them. I was like, I don't remember Mega Man being so easy. Like Hmm. He just flew through them. And then I went and played them on my regular emulator, you know, the actual game, and it was way harder. And I was Damn. like, what the fuck is going on? And I realized the emulator version I had on my phone, they got rid of a lot of the enemies on each level. <laughs> they made some of the level platforms easier, and they made, like, way more power-ups and stuff everywhere. So they nerfed the fuck out of it just to make it so you could just breeze right through it. I was like, why? Jeez. And now, now that makes me wonder, how many retro games... You, like say you got a, you got a switch and you download whatever you know some mario games or something how do you know that's the authentic mario game and not a refurbished one that's slightly easier so kids can beat it now uh, i'm just using mario as an example mario's not that difficult but like say a ninja yeah. gaiden or something how do you know you're getting the authentic original hard as balls one and not one that's just slightly easier i don't know but i mean so far of those games uh on the switch that they put on there so far, they are all really fucking hard to me. So, either they're their authentic original versions, or I'm fucking terrible at video game. At video yeah, what if you come what. over one day and play one of these games on my emulator? And like, wait a minute, this is way harder. And you realize you just <laughs> suck ass so bad that you just got destroyed on the nerfed version. I'm just bad at everything. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want to play video games anymore. It does seem that way. I mean, we just finished Star Tropics for a future episode. I took like fucking uh, probably like close to a month to beat that shit and you beat it in four days <laughs> i know and i only played it for uh 20 minute increments that's insane how did you do that like it's did a you two just our game it's not hard anyway that's a future episode but <laughs> i will say this about star tropics uh that game had a lot of fucking decoys that were really annoying like you go into a room and it just there was no need to go in the room mm-hmm. or you would uh exit a level on accident or something like, god damn it oh yeah but I did ha- I did fall prey to that because I did play that fairly legit. I use save states just to, uh, if that happened, I just go back to the, where I was. Like I'm not fucking going through all that. But other yeah. than that, I just played it legit. Yeah. Didn't really, have to, I didn't have to look anything up too much or anything. That's so. crazy. I don't get it. And it was a, uh, it was a little difficult at parts. But you know what? I saw Mega Man 11, like a trailer for it, and I heard somebody talk about it too. That game looks fucking cool. Yeah. Um. You know, I ne- again, I never played any of the other ones, like Mega Man, uh, the X-Series, or uh, 
any of the ones that have more like decent graphics and stuff. But that game looks it it looks amazing. Just I that I definitely want to play that eventually if I play none of the other ones. Um, and that sounds stupid because it's like the newest one, but mm-hmm. it looks cool. I don't know. Anyway, moving on. Let's talk more about the uh, small amount of story that's in this game, and then we'll move on to talking about epidemic stories in general. Yay, so, fun topic. We'll see. We'll see. This is definitely just a silly episode, but appropriate because the plague was pretty fucking dark. Yeah, the plague was pretty bleak. So I think it's a funny choice uh, to follow the plague with this game, but it's also legitimate comparison it's about disease even though it's a simplistic science fiction comic bookish uh, comic bookish version of a disease story and i don't really know the characters that well but i was confused when uh roll came down with roboenza roll and roll is like the uh maid or something i don't know she she's or, or maybe it's mega man's sister i don't know but she's yeah i i did not realize i was like how did she get Roboenza? Because I didn't, I full on, I did not know that she was a robot. <laughs> They're all robots. I not everybody. I mean, like Doctor Light is, is a she robot. How is she going to be related to Mega Man and not? I be a robot? I didn't know that. I didn't know. I don't know any of the backstory of this stuff. Like, isn't even Doctor Wily like kind of robotic? I don't know that. I have a point about that a little in a little bit too. I mean, maybe they talk about that in a in another. Mega Man game. No, Doctor Wily looks human, unless he is an android. But yeah, well, Roll Roll looked human too. They, I, I mean, even when you look her up, all that looks robotic is like her boots or whatever. She doesn't look like a robot. She just looks like a, like a girl. Yeah, you're right. So I like. I don't know, dude. I, I don't had no remember. clue. I don't remember her at all. You know, it doesn't matter at all. They're all robots. You should say they're all robots. I mean, she has to all be. Right. How she get the robot disease? The, I mean, yeah. So I, I'm just robot saying. I, it was confusing to me because you know, not not having played the previous like 40 Mega Man games before this one. But eventually, you require a dose of uh, the Roboenza cure, and I think you mentioned this earlier. But Mega Man also starts to get sick, so Roll gives Mega Man the that dose of the vaccine in order for him to keep fighting and save the world. After that, you don't really get much more story until the end when you defeat Wily. And even then it's not that much more, <laughs> but, uh, so th- and this is the Wily, Wily thing. I just mentioned a second ago. He, you beat him. He falls out of his like machine ship thing and then he's sick now. So he's coming down with something. So <laughs> Mega Man takes him to the hospital and then Wily escapes and leaves behind like a huge pile of Roboenza vaccine in his hospital room. So it's a weird thing that I don't, I don't really know what the point of that ending was. But also, you're kind of left with a question: Did Doctor Wily just come down with Roboenza, or did he just get a regular flu or a cold or something? I don't know, but I know the alternate ending. If you beat it uh, without getting any hits, uh, Mega Man, he takes the vaccine and he gets severe autism. Oh. So I thought that was a pretty cool ending. Oh, that would have been better. And he counts a lot of, like, eggs and stuff and likes penguins a lot. Is this a reference to something, or are you just being an asshole? No, just, you know, fucking people apparently <laughs> take vaccines get autism now. I don't know. That's true. <laughs> Why wouldn't it be happening to robots? Yeah. Robot autism. Robo-enza, robot, robot maybe that'll autism. happen to Doctor Wily because apparently he's a robot. If he got the robot disease, I don't know. Well, people online because I googled this because I was like, "What the fuck is happening here?" People online were pointing out that the main weapon you have to use to defeat him is the chill spike. So they're arguing that maybe he got sick from all the cold you're shooting at him. <laughs> that's stupid. Oh, that's dumb. <laughs> stupid shit. Oh God. It's probably true, I. But but still, you're kind of like, what? Is he supposed to be a robot? And he's and that's why I don't know. That's why he's making all these robot. The Japanese villains. have a very strange sense of humor. Like, <laughs> it's weird. Like in the Star Tropics game, they made everything named after cola. Like, <laughs> supposed to be funny. I don't. I don't know. I can't wait to talk about that game. It's um, a weird game. So the story is stupid. So let's just talk about epidemic stories. <laughs> 
Um, All right. So regardless of how simple this story is, it is fascinating to me how many epidemic disease related stories came out of the last couple of decades before COVID. Yeah. Like it's, it's interesting to me. It's sort of like how there's like thousands of world war two stories. And for most people, those are, you know, obviously there's a lot of people who have some kind of direct relation to it and, or, or people, you know, decades ago who were actually in it. But like, for most people, those things are like an intangible but interesting type of horror that people can't just, they just can't stop thinking and theorizing about, even as far as the whole idea of robots getting quote unquote sick and taking over the world, which is not that uh, all that far off from reality nowadays. <laughs> yeah, uh, with AI and everything. Exactly. You know, I was just thinking now that we've been through COVID, I, I wonder if we're going to start seeing a whole like brand new brand of epidemic and disease stories since we and our contemporaries have actually lived through it instead of these movies and stuff like outbreak and the walking dead and stuff like that uh i think it's gonna follow the spanish flu model where nobody wants to talk about it for like 10 or 20 I was, years i was gonna say oh I, I i thought you'd argue with me like it'll I, we're either gonna get see a whole new brand or it's gonna fucking drop off i mean i don't, personally i don't want to read stories about epidemics i don't want to fucking hear about them even when we did the plague it was a problem reading that because we just kept yeah. thinking about fucking covid and it made it yeah. even more depressing right kind of took away a lot of the enjoyment we might have had otherwise with the book but it might be interesting if people start looking at it in a new light now that we have actually experienced it and like you know things where it's not not strictly like what would happen if an outbreak of some sort happened because we know that now sort of like more stories about what we know happens um or the stories that are not directly about an outbreak but they are a sub story of things that happen during an outbreak that we that aren't like commonly known does that make sense yeah, I think we're more likely to see stories set after a major outbreak, whether they're fictional or not. Mm -hmm. So you think of COVID, I think of stories set in the aftermath of COVID. Uh, a more apt example might be like 9-11, how the world changed after 9-11. Yeah. So you're not getting a bunch of 9-11 stories so much as you're getting what the world is like or will be like after 9-11 set, you know, happened. So you get like this uh, big brother security kind of world where everything's monitored. And I can see like post COVID stories uh, eventually really taking off where we just focus on this world after mm -hmm. the big, you know, change. Yeah. And that way it's sort of, <laughs> it's almost like a new version of post apocalypse stories. If you think about it. Yeah, it really is. And I, I don't, I was never really into epidemic stories or even movies about like disease, diseases and stuff. I don't know why. It's not a big fear I ever had, and it's just I don't really find the subject matter enjoyable. So yeah, I don't. I generally don't want to go into that. Why I like the plague was because it was more about how people dealt with what was going on versus the disease itself. Right. It was just like about the isolation and you know how it changes sense of community, um, how the government reacts, things like that are interesting. But the actual disease itself and everybody just getting sick, I don't. I don't know. Like even like the you know not the plague from the plague but like the real like the bubonic plague even those stories of all the dead bodies and stuff i never really thought those were that cool i'd like the uh ghost stories and the gothic literature that came from that yeah you know you think of the plague doctors with the mask and stuff like that shit's cool yeah but the actual disease itself i never really was into yeah i i like them i i like the i don't know i, I like the science fiction around it but it's just it's all different now that we've actually experienced a sample of that and like what it actually feels like it's just, it is cool because you could see how people reacted to real life events yeah. so how they reacted to a real lockdown and real isolation and re like following real mandates and things like that and it's it's not surprising because they did the same thing they did in the fucking spanish flu like you had people that refused to wear masks you had people that uh refused to take the vaccines or shots or anything you had people that were forcing others to do these things and it was just like it becomes a battle of ideology 
And it's crazy that over a hundred years later, the fucking exact same thing happened. Like it didn't like nobody <laughs> yeah. learned anything from the first time this happened. It's remarkable. And I didn't even know that's what that book was. Uh, you know, I, I think I was aware of that book, but it's just so weird that it's just like fucking exactly the same. It's bizarre. It makes you feel but, like we, don't, as a species, don't learn anything, and we're just fucking stupid as shit. Honestly, <laughs> we just honestly. Like, oh, well, that's that. What really uh, worries me about that kind of stuff is like, okay, if we're if we're able with all the science and technology we have now, if we are capable of following the exact same follies that we did over a hundred years ago, who's to say when it comes to another major world war or Holocaust or anything like that, we won't do the same fucking shit again? We oh, won't yeah. allow company uh, countries to perform the same atrocities again. We're already seeing it, but it's like, why can't we learn and not do right. the things that happened before? We say like we're incapable or what? Right. It's funny because like all all through school, they're always like, "Oh, you got to study history. You got to make sure you're studying your history because that's how you learn from your from our past errors." We and we have to we have to know. So they don't repeat it. You know, we have to know our ancestors' past errors so we don't do what they did and do the and just have the same fucking insane results. And, the generation uh, but, that went through World War II, some of them are still alive and yeah. we're like still fucking following the same models of how to, you know, kill people. And shit. Yeah. It's and like, it's why? like, it makes no sense, especially when like parts of our government are like are obviously not paying attention to history. It, it's it blows your mind. I mean, I have no concrete examples because I don't follow the news or anything like that. I'm just saying it. I remember thinking this in the past year or two with certain events. Just you can see it. Um, and I'm not going to talk, talk specifics, but you can see it. They're like, they get, everybody gets caught up in the moment nowadays and they just completely ignore warnings from literature and warnings from our own actual history. <laughs> and, well, uh, and now we have to start paying attention to the warnings from video games. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get people who, you know, it's like a meme now about the uh, the fall of the Roman Empire. Like people always joke about the fall of the Roman Empire and stuff. And I just don't understand how something that happened so long ago, it's we just still just eh, we'll do the exact same thing they did. It'll be different. no. It's like it's fiction. Like just, it, it's fiction to everybody now. Yeah, it's, it's like it's we just have a all fun these thing. stories and all these examples of what not to do and what to do, like what works and what doesn't work, and we just still do whatever the fuck we want. Yeah, like, well, you know, yeah, our lives it'll be are different this time. Our lives are all too cushy now. It's hard for anybody to actually think like uh, why we're reading this stuff, like why we study history in school, why there are even these stories in video games. Like there, we don't tell stories just for the sake of telling stories. Sometimes we do, because it's fun. But, I mean, that's why it's important to have things like this podcast, where we actually address things like this. It's like, the, stories aren't just stories. Stories are, they're, they're more they're than that. They're a reflection they, of life. Yes. You know, like, and then even something as dumb as this game, it is still a possibility that <laughs> robots are going to fucking turn on us and destroy the fucking world. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, that's the funny thing. Like, we think back to Terminator as the yes. prime example. It's like, why are we following the Terminator law? Like, we're like, hey, what happened to Terminator? Let's make that reality. Hey, can we make the Matrix real? Let's fucking do Why? We actually have ex examples from fiction that show how badly these things can turn out. Yeah. Whether it be the advancement of AI, the advancement of robot technology. Uh, You know, and I use the word advancement as... uh how we progress quote unquote this technology but at some point when it starts to harm us maybe i wouldn't consider that an advancement anymore uh more of uh detriment to society so why do we want to create the things that we already theorized can be terrible and it's like uh -huh. let's see if it really is though let's see yeah. if we can create a I, sky net and, it, think, and maybe it won't be bad yeah i think there's a tendency for everyone to think like well, that's fiction. Like we can actually use this in real life to to for, to, to uh, our benefit. But you know, there's a reason that there's a collective understanding of these fictional ideas. It, you know, it's not just people making stuff up. I don't think that's ever the case. I think the the like like you know the the idea that every story has been told, so every new story is just a different twist on another story that was already told. Mm -hmm. basically i think that's like a collective unconscious or whatever collective con you know consciousness uh thing like 
where people aren't just making this up because they have wild imaginations. I think we have the stories that we have as humans because that's what's in all of us. And you can't just, I don't think it's right to just be like, oh, that's fiction, you know? And clearly, clearly you see it playing out. Like people want the AI to be a good thing or, or even people that are working on AI hope bad shit happens. Yeah, Um, they don't care. Yeah. Well, humans, for whatever reason, throughout our history, it's amazing we're still alive. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like it's amazing that the human race is still in existence because we ignore warning. We always have. It could be as simple as if you go to different parts of uh, Asian countries where they have the rock from hundreds or even thousands of years ago where humans mark them to know that, hey, this is a possible tsunami zone. Do not build houses here because if a big wave hits, everybody's dead and they still fucking build houses. And then there's a big wave that hits and they all die. It's like, how many times? You know what's even more fucked up? We will see that, and then within 15 years, rebuild in the same spot. Like, yeah, it, what are the odds that happens again? What's yeah. the odds that this volcano in Pompeii will ever blow again? Like, <laughs> fucking, stop doing stupid shit. Let's just fucking learn just once. Just look at the thing and have a proper mind frame where you're like, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do what those people did. I'm just gonna do something different. No, we're just like, eh, it'll work this time. Yeah, That's what it always is. I don't know if it's this weird optimism or just ignoring like the the fucking uh, yeah, like danger I, for whatever yeah, reason. Yeah, like, like I said, that's like it's, we live such cushy lies now that everything is just fake. You know, we have these warnings, but it's meaningless to us now. And I, well, I mean, we saw the a prime example of that during COVID when yeah. everyone started freaking out. Well, not everyone, but a lot of people started freaking out because their lives were changing and they couldn't just go to the grocery store whenever they wanted, or like just all these different things with mandates in these big cities, and people couldn't handle that their level of comfort changed even a little bit. Mm -hmm. They just couldn't handle it. So what if an actual disaster happened? Or what if like something major happens? Like they just keep ignoring and putting their head in the sand and just pretending everything's all right. Eh, it'll get better. It'll get better. (laughs) It's like you were under, like your house is underwater now from all these floods and you're just pretending that it'll be fine eventually. It's like, fucking take accountability and realize that things have changed and you have to accept the change and move on or just die i guess i don't know i don't know what the other option is but a lot of people just couldn't handle that during uh covid they just lost their fucking minds and flipped out on people in supermarkets and shit it was like it was fun to watch but it was weird i got flipped out on yeah whatever yeah, you gotta wear that mask bryce you can't fucking you know what store nazis sometimes the minimum it falls wage down. employees will freak out on you uh Mega Man. <laughs> Mega Man's a good game, huh? Robot disease. Robot disease shows us that that could be a real thing. But we, well, that's the funny thing. It's like nobody's gonna listen to a Mega Man game. Like nobody's gonna take a warning from a Mega Man game that <laughs> robot disease can cause problems. And oh, but we have you know we have this giant advancement in AI and it becomes sentient. Sentient. And you know who? What's gonna happen? Somebody's gonna create a disease for that AI, so it mm-hmm. goes off the fucking rails. <laughs> like, that's the, probably the first thing that'll happen. But you know, we won't listen to a Mega Man game because that's just fun. Yeah, like, that won't happen. You know, it was remarkably hard to figure out a video game that went with this book, and part of the reason is that a lot of the best games about uh, disease and epidemics and stuff are more contemporary. And, you know, we're mostly playing these old ones because that's what we can both yeah. play. And and Mega Man is definitely less time consuming. But a lot of the games are zombie games, too. Yeah, I was going to say that, too. Like we did just do the Resident Evil episode for Halloween. So we couldn't do that. Um, and then we didn't want to do I was thinking like there's stuff like Last of Us or other zombie games. But we just did Resident Evil. And, you know, uh, I was I did a quick search before we recorded. There's other games um, that I, I think refer to, at least refer to epidemics or disease like Bloodborne, uh, Callisto Protocol. Um, yeah, I don't know, other shit like that. But the two things are it's always better when we can both uh, play, play it instead of just me. But I also finally purchased a PlayStation 5. So I can play some of these newer things now. Uh, but Caleb might just have to listen or do some research before we talk since he won't be able to play. You know, Bryce, believe it or not, I'm actually still a writer. Like, I actually still I'm, have to take I'm the still a write write Caleb, stories. I write the notes for these podcasts. I still write some poetry. I write 
some of the TikTok videos I and the YouTube videos. I I put those videos together. I'm a busy boy. <laughs> Did I mention that I also host a podcast and my podcast has award winning guest on there and I have to do notes and stuff for that as well? Actually, do you do that. notes? Not really. I just talk yeah. to them. But you know what? They like it. They you're, like it better. You're better that you're better at it than I am. I just had somebody actually their publicist reached out twice and I still got to respond that wants to be on the podcast and they got fucking Netflix shows and movies and stuff based off of their work. So Jeez. I should probably take it seriously at some point. Yeah. Maybe I, I, somehow you're good at doing that. You're just fucking rolling off the ball, though. I don't get it. I don't. I can't. talk, huh? The, I think the thing is, is I don't mind if I sound or am stupid. Yeah, I just talk. Yeah, like, that hey. bothers me. I don't like sounding stupid. I know I, I still sound it. stupid every single episode, but I don't like it. Listen, when you get to my age, you just stop fucking caring. I'm not that far off from your age. I'm like six years. So six. Seven. I, I just turned thirty-seven yesterday, Bryce. Okay, seven years ish. Happy birthday, Caleb. Thank you. By the time this episode drops, it'll be probably fucking March or something. 2025. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All righty. That was, that was a fun, a little bit. I got, I got better than I thought it was going to. We got Make some good conversation out of that. We didn't go deep into the weapons, so that's good. Like, we didn't talk about all the weapon upgrades. Because I've listened to some podcasts and uh, not so much. Po- I mean, they might be podcasts, but like on YouTube, I watch some videos where people talk about these games. And they just go really deep into the details of like the gameplay and the weapons. And I mean, I'm sure there's an audience for that, but I just zone out immediately. I'm like, oh, okay. no, I know, because I, I mean, I mean, you can say something in the comments if you're, you know, at your listeners, if you think that we should have talked about that for some reason but i think if you're listening to a mega man episode yeah or i don't know i you get the gist like you get a new weapon after every fucking boss like <laughs> and the, some and the, people like there i mean it's a very small subsect of the gaming community i think but they just it's almost like hard sci-fi fans like they want the details on everything they want you to describe the arc of the shot and you know how many bits it takes the hit range like all this shit and i'm like I, I, we're not that podcast. Well, and I will say, I feel like this Mega Man in particular, the weapons kind of sucked. So they I didn't really, I didn't really care. There were like, there was one that I used, and I forget what it was called, like the the blade one, the triple blade. I think that was the only one I really liked using. Everyone, Do you find in ones. most of these games, like Metroid and stuff, unless you really have to. Uh, for specific reasons, you end up sticking with one weapon you like the most. Yeah. And that's just what you go through. Like, that's what I always do. Like, I very rarely, like, fl- even the Mega Man games, a lot of times I end up just using, like, some of the main, like, you know, the main cannon and stuff. I don't use all the fucking special guns. I was going to say, like, I, <laughs> we're going back to gameplay here, but, like, uh, seriously, I think I use just the, the, uh, what, the blaster or whatever, the main, the regular yeah. cannon the entire game because I was preserving my uh, ammo or whatever. Special weapons for the bosses, yeah. Yeah. And then I, I, after the fact, I watched some people playing and they were using the special weapons all the time. And I was like, how are you even getting to the next... How are you holding out? Because you... I don't, I, I don't know. I don't get it. I think, uh, and this might be a little bit of a gaming hack, if you want to see how just to beat a game properly... Like, just, like, a quick, you know, not, like, enjoying the game. Your goal is just to beat the game. Watch a speedrunner do it. Mm -hmm. So if you watch a speedrunner play this Mega Man game, you'll know exactly what weapons to use when because they're doing everything as efficiently as possible. Hmm. So whatever is going to work the best, that's what they use in that moment. So you go to a stage where you need a fire blaster or something. uh, If they're not using that, then that means you don't actually need that to beat the, not only don't need it to beat the level, but it's not the optimal way to beat the level. Because their only goal is to beat it as fast as possible. Yeah. If you want to watch the no hit ones where someone tries to beat a game without getting hit or whatever minimal damage is required to beat the game, uh, that's another way too to go about it because then that'll show you the optimal way to not go through it as quickly as possible, but go through with you know the least damage so you know what en- enemies to avoid and the way to navigate the uh, the level and you know. Things like that. So those are little tricks you can use uh, just to improve your gameplay because I know a lot of times where I'll go through like these games like we were saying. It's like, I don't know what fucking weapon I should be using. <laughs> those help a lot because you're like, oh, no, that'll get me through the quickest. I'm just going to do that. Yeah, I should watch some of those. I've never actually watched anyone do a speed run. 
That's I've been cool. watching a lot of speed run documentaries and like an hour long for just like these old games, but it's so interesting, like the speed run community, because you just see like literally a guy will spend, spend 10 months just to beat his own record of like a second, like just Jesus. to get an extra second. And it's like, they, what a waste they learn of time. every glitch and everything. Yeah, it seems like a waste of time, but if you're making, you know, a lot of money as a professional gamer, well, yeah, this, a lot I of guess. streamers yeah, and people love watching them just attempt after attempt after attempt. <laughs> I have to wonder if people don't have lives or what. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, know, but man. I'm not I'm not hating on anybody that enjoys that stuff. But just for me, I didn't get no personal fulfillment. Yeah. If I'm watching somebody just for five hours trying to break a speed run record, I feel like I would uh, kind of waste my life. Yeah. I haven't you know, gotten like, into like, like doing the, anything. the Twitch stuff or watching people li like live stream games. I, I thought about it because the, the one podcast I like, he does that once in a while. But I, I haven't done it yet. I don't know. I like playing the games. I don't like watching people. I mean, it's fun. I think it but... would be a lot more interesting, like, say, if you had a streamer who was playing a video game, but during the video game, they're either, like, telling you stories mm -hmm. or they're, uh, like, almost like what we're doing here, describing the game and just different aspects of the game or something. I think that would be more entertaining. But when I just watch, like, these streamers who are just like, ah, oh, they just scream and just, like, shoot stuff. And yeah. it's like, that's, I mean, I would just rather play myself. Right. Like, I have two other brothers. My one brother always talks about how he hated how my oldest brother would force him to watch him play games. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but I always loved watching him play games. And I don't think we would even talk or anything. I would just watch him play like Final Fantasy. And that's how I fell in love with Final Fantasy. Cause I was like, I, it, it looked hard to me. So I wanted to be able to, and, and, it, and just the fantasy and the colors and the, you know, illustrations mm -hmm. are just cool. But, so I think I think it's different when you're watching like like your your older brother as your when it would uh, well when you're watching like your older brother as a little kid. Well, That's... it depends what you're watching for too. If you're watching these streamers because you want to either learn the game or know how to beat it better, or you just find it entertaining, what like the way they go about beating it. Uh, if you're watching a speed runner, like I said, there's a lot of reasons to go into watching speed runs and you can learn a lot about the games and just like the glitches they can utilize and things like that, especially with retro games. But just the thing that turns me off is like the, you'll watch like, Oh, I'm just watching a guy play Fortnite. Like, oh, it's no real reason. He's just playing Fortnite and he's just talking and pretending mm -hmm. to be funny and saying dumb yeah. shit. And it's like, that's like not really entertaining do. to me. Yeah. 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 I don't fucking play no Fortnite. Fuck that Fortnite. We just pretend to be funny and all the time. Try to be funny. Not. Yeah. Say jokes that goes over the other guy's head and yeah, look at each other and look dumb. Uh huh. We're really good <laughs> That's at that. All right. <laughs> We're real good at that. All right. Somehow we managed to go over an hour on this shit. Gosh darn it. But thank you everyone for listening to Arcade Bookshop. Even though a Mega Man episode went over an hour, um, stay tuned two weeks from now for another juicy video game episode. If you're enjoying the show, be sure to follow and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. If you like listening to us shoot the shit about video games and books, please tell a friend to listen, because telling friends is by far the best way for us to grow and continue putting out good content and increasing the quality of the show. And we, we just want to make a good quality show that people appreciate and love, and not just random trash, because I care about this podcast. I think it's fun and uh, important. Uh, please remember to rate and review if you haven't done that already. You can follow us on Instagram at arcade underscore bookshop, and uh, we're also on TikTok and YouTube at arcade bookshop. If you have any game and book recommendations, you can message us pretty much anywhere or email us at arcadebookshop at gmail.com. Uh, we'd like to hear cool ideas for the show and not have to think of everything all ourselves. Caleb, how is DPW? The Drunken Pen Writing Podcast is uh, going well. We had a couple real shit episodes we just recorded uh, because Sick. we got burnt out on all the guests we had. Well, yeah. again, as the release of this, probably fucking nonsense now. But we, uh, you know, sometimes we just got to take a break and just have some lowbrow humor, dumb episodes. And I yeah. think that's important, too. Kinda For some like reason, people, some people like them. Kind of like how this episode started out. Yeah, it's just fucking rambling nonsense. And yeah. actually, uh, last week we recorded an episode so bad, <laughs> seventeen minutes in, I just stopped it. I was like, "That's it. 
we're fucking starting over. <laughs> we just completely did a whole other episode. Just fucking scrapped the whole thing. I was like, that's terrible. I was like, oh, sometimes you just know it's bad. You just have to end it and just do something else. And I think that's fine. As long as you realize you do it. Yeah. We probably should have done that a couple of times, but we didn't. Mm, it's tough. <laughs> well, this it's tough for this, too, because this is like a theme show. So we yeah. have episodes that are you know, like <laughs> we scrap them say the Pokemon episode or something halfway through. It's like we just still have to talk about Pokemon. Like we can't just not talk about it. So I, we have to just restart. I might have to really chop that one down and just that that might be our shortest episode, I think, if I if I really cut it down. Yeah, that was a rough one. Yeah. I, uh, we didn't just not jive with that Pokemon yeah. discussion, I don't think. But anyway. <laughs> Thank you all again for listening and maybe you're done right, Caleb. <laughs> Yes, Bryce, I'm done. Okay. Thank you all again for listening, and maybe, maybe, maybe do as we do. Keep a controller in one hand and your book in the other. 